Welcome back to Bumblebee. What's up, you bees? Save the bees, I guess. I never say that. I should say that more in videos. We're called Bumblebee. Save the bees. Sure, why not? Here are the top 10 ancient inventions that will blow your mind. Sure, let's talk about some old gadgets. Number 10, ancient telescope. The Nimrod lens. It's a 3,000 year old rock crystal lens discovered in modern day Iraq in the mid 1800s. Now, it was discovered quite recently, but back then this thing was like ancient technology. Today we have the James Webb Space Telescope. 3,000 years ago, they were more advanced than we think. The lens is believed to have been made by a Syrian craftsman sometime around 750 BC. It's the oldest known example right now of a magnifying lens, which is Sounds kind of nerdy, but that's cool. That's kind of a, one of those facts that makes me go, oh, interesting, I like that. Up until then, everybody was just squinting a lot, really. We didn't have anything to zoom in on. The lens is quite small in size. It's no James Webb, that's for sure. It's around three centimeters in diameter and a focal length of 12 centimeters. So again, not James Webb, but it was something, right? It was anything. The exact purpose of the Nimrod lens is still up for debate, that's still unknown, but it's thought to have been used for decorative or ceremonial purposes, or possibly, hopefully, magnifying things things to study small objects because man, that's science right there. It's technology. The Nimrod lens is the first example of ancient optical technology. That's cool. Imagine building that. It's crazy. Number nine, the iron pillar. Remember when monoliths started to appear all around the world? We were all talking about it for like a month and then we just stopped. What happened with that? That's concerning. This next one rings a similar bell. The iron pillar of Delhi. It's a 7.3 meter tall iron column and it's located in the Kitab complex in Delhi, India. Now it went up sometime during the Gupta period. So sometime around the third and 4th century AD. And it's been standing for over 1600 years without rusting or corroding at all, which is impressive. That and like the Egyptian pyramids, we have no idea how this happened. The column is notable for its high quality iron compositions and advanced forging techniques used to create it. We still can't figure out just how that was done considering how long ago it was made. The iron pillar is also covered in several inscriptions in the Sanskrit language, which is pretty exciting, providing valuable ancient history about the Gupta Empire. And also again, in remarkable condition, which is super rare. The pillar attracts visitors from all over the world. Wanna go see a pillar? I kinda wanna go see a pillar now. That'd be a crazy trip. Number eight, the Antikythera mechanism. Computers today, we can, we can fit them in our pockets, but ancient Greek analog computers, apparently you can also fit those in your pockets. Who knew? The Antikythera mechanism was used to predict astronomical positions and eclipses for calendrical and astrological purposes. That sounds scientific, wow. It was discovered in 1901 in the Antikythera shipwreck, hence its name, and it's estimated to have been built around 150 and 100 BC. Now the mechanism consists of at least 30 bronze gears and it was operated by turning a crank. This is again, like ancient technology, this is amazing. It's rusty and full of barnacles now, but back then in its prime, this mechanism would accurately display the positions of the sun, the moon, and planets on specific dates, as well as predict solar and lunar eclipses. Some guy in the back's like, spoilers, it's tomorrow, told you. The mechanism is considered a remarkable technological achievement for its time and provides valuable insights into the history of ancient Greek astronomy and technology, all in one rusty box right there. Think of what we haven't found yet, you know what I mean? I'm nervous, I'm so nervous. Humans are quite advanced. Number seven, ancient seismoscope. Zhanghang seismoscope is an ancient Chinese instrument that was used to detect and measure earthquakes. And it looked pretty badass. I'm not gonna lie, this thing looks pretty cool. It was invented by renowned scientist, mathematician, and astronomer Zhang Heng. It was made during the Han Dynasty around 132 CE. The seismoscope consisted of a bronze vessel that rested on the back of a bronze dragon, a dragon, with eight open mouthed toads positioned beneath it. Yeah, it's scientific, but it's also a beautiful instrument, right? Like I said, it's badass. So when an earthquake would happen, a mechanism inside the vessel would trigger the release of the ball from one of the toad's mouths, indicating the direction of the earthquake. He'd be like, nah, that way. And everyone would be like, okay, cool. Let's go this way then. Today it's a little different. Today it's, it's not, it's fun. It's just graphs and charts. Looks like some avatar technology, whatever. No toads puking up any balls in any direction, so. Ergo boring. Number six, the Baghdad battery. Also known as the Parthian battery. This is an ancient device that would go back to 248 BC. Why am I doing this? Am I Italian? Am I Steve Jobs? I'm walking around like, ah yes, I invented this. Look at my loose wrist here. Why do I, I gotta keep these down. Keep these at bay here. The battery consists of a clay jar, a copper cylinder, and an iron rod. All of which were found together in what is now modern day Iraq. It's believed that the device was used to generate an electric current by filling the jar with an acidic liquid like vinegar, or wine. I sound like Bill Nye the science guy right now, but then they would insert copper and iron components after, and then they would make electricity. They would make, I don't know, here, Tony Stark would make this. I don't know, it's crazy. 
The purpose of the Baghdad battery is still unknown, which is fascinating. I won't be able to sleep at night now, but it's thought to have been used for electroplating or medicine or as a religious artifact. And today we're like, well, we have no idea. This is the stuff that I love, old, ancient, like this sounds like something from Breath of the Wild that I would find. Number five. Ancient Greek fire. Okay, this one's pretty epic. It's not, uh, I mean, it, it's horrible. It's pretty rough history here, but definitely interesting nonetheless. Greek fire was used by the Eastern Roman Empire from the 7th to the 12th century. Now, the formula for Greek fire was a closely guarded secret, which is like so villainous, but it's believed to have contained petroleum, quicklime, and other combustible substances, all in one soup, just a big hot mess. Something you don't wanna drop, really, ideally. Greek fire was delivered using a flamethrower-like device on a boat called a siphon, and it was capable of igniting on water, making it a very reliable weapon against any ship out there. Yeah, they would shoot hot fire through a giant syringe at enemy ships. Ancient history is cool, it's impressive, but it's also, most of the time, brutal. It's disgusting, my God. Number four, mechanical clocks. Look, we all love an hourglass, all right? I love an hourglass. Playing a board game with the family, you aggressively flip that thing down, no better feeling, right? Tick tock, sands are swirling. But why don't we have an hourglass anymore? Why don't we use those? Those are pretty sweet, it's a pretty amazing invention. Let's talk about those for a bit. During the medieval period, the invention of mechanical clocks revolutionized timekeeping and replaced the use of hourglasses. One guy's like, what? I love these though. That's me, I'm the guy. Mechanical clocks were first invented in Europe in the 13th century and they were initially used in public spaces like churches, town squares, stuff like that. These early clocks relied on the energy generated by falling weights to power their movements. Yeah, you're not gonna have one of these next to your bed. Not for a while, at least. Mechanical clocks allowed for more precise timekeeping and helped standardize time across different regions. But back then it was scary. Back then it was weights and big things bonging around above your head. It's like, what time is it? I don't know. The only one we got. Number three. The blast furnace. This one was also quite important. All these are pretty important, but this one's, you know, wasn't used to destroy a human being, so it's good. The blast furnace. It's a medieval invention that revolutionized the production of iron, which is so key. We love that over here in Steamville with iron everywhere. I don't know, just trains literally all around us. It was first introduced in Europe during the 14th century and it quickly became a game changer. The furnace's design allowed for higher temperatures and more efficient use of fuel, leading to increased iron production and most importantly, lower costs, which yeah, blacksmiths love this, you know? They hate this one trick. The blast furnace would also enable the production of higher quality iron that was suitable in wider ranges of applications, which again, we love that. We love when iron just stays in one spot. Usually it's how we like our iron. We made better, faster iron. I don't know, what a day. It sounds like a Daft Punk song. Harder, better, faster iron. This invention spread across Europe, of course, with many regions becoming iron production hot zones. A lot of blacksmiths in the area, a lot of a lot of beards. Single blacksmiths in your area. Just swipe, here we go. Number two, the printing press. I'm not a fan of homework, but I get it. It's gotta be done sometime. The printing press, of course we have to include this. This is a revolutionary invention during, again, the medieval period that allowed for the mass production of books and pamphlets. I love pamphlets, thank God. Love me a good pamphlet. I love flipping things only thrice and then closing it, that's it. No more than three. Invented by Johannes Gutenberg in the mid 15th century, the printing press could reproduce text more quickly and Again, it was pretty cheap considering what came before. You had to pay a guy to do everything. That's crazy. You gotta listen to him all day? No. You gotta feed him? No. This had quite the impact on society and enabled wider access to knowledge, the spread of ideas, and it contributed to the growth of literacy, which again, we love that. Still leading towards that one. The printing press played a key role in the Renaissance and the Protestant Reformation, and it may or may not have helped lay the foundation for the modern world. So I guess, yeah, we can put this close to number one, I would say, or number two is pretty good. And finally, number one, flutes. Yeah, we're ending on flutes, the best, right? We had to learn it for three years in school. Why? Couldn't tell you. No idea, we had to do it though. Music has been in the air for a very, very long time. Neanderthals enjoyed a flute every now and then. Who would have thunk? They weren't playing We Three Kings like us, you know, but they were making music as early as 50,000 years ago, which is just baffling. The first instrument known to man was most likely our vocal cords, but the second instrument were the flutes of Geist and Closer Cave. They're the oldest musical instruments ever that have ever been discovered, period. They were made from bird bone and the ivory of a mammoth. Yeah, if that's any indication how old they are, they made music out of mammoth ivory. Again, I still can't play the recorder. I, I never learned. I was useless. My fingers were too long. I'd always like slip off the holes. I got Jack Skellington fingers. I can't play a recorder. No way. I've been your host, Taylor McWaters. Those are the top 10 ancient inventions that hopefully blew your minds. If you want more, comment down below. Say part two. Did you also play a recorder in high school or whatever? Or was that just my school for some reason? We just had to do that. See ya.